Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today in your 2017 Keystone Montana, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Hydrostar's 1600 PSI hydraulic brake actuator. To help us with this installation and get everything hooked up and working properly, we're also gonna be using Hydrostar's tandem axle brake line kit, as well as Kodiak's 13 inch disc brake kit. If you need a triple axle kit, Hydrostar does have a line kit available for you as well here at eTrailer.com. We'll begin our installation by getting our actuator mounted because we need to know where we're gonna have to route all of our lines and our wiring to. We've decided to mount ours in the front compartment here, right in the very front. This is our hydraulics here for the leveling system. And we just made some brackets and then just attached to the brackets. We do have a bracket kit available here at eTrailer. So you can pick up that kit to make it easier so you don't have to make custom brackets because we already have custom ones that we do sell. And this just gives us a nice platform and you have to secure it with your own hardware. Hardware does not come provided, but you can get nuts and bolts at your local hardware store. Now that we've got it securely mounted, it has four wires on it that we'll need to hook up. You'll have a white wire, a yellow wire, a blue wire, and a black wire. The white wire is our ground. The yellow wire is for our breakaway switch. The blue wire is from our brake controller to tell it when to activate the brakes and the black wire is going to be our power wire. So we're going to start, we're just going to hook up the power wire first and this wire needs to have a circuit breaker before it hooks to your power source. You can get circuit breakers here at eTrailer.com. We're going to be using a 40 amp circuit breaker for this one. So you'll want to go ahead and get your circuit breaker mounted so you know where you're going to want, want to run your wires to. So we just put ours here, just right on the back side of our inner compartment. We're in the same compartment, we're just on the back wall. And we put it next to the other one, so it kind of blends in. It looks like it was supposed to be there the whole time. So in order to get our wiring over there, we are going to have to extend it to reach over to our breaker. So we're going to go ahead and crimp on an extension piece. So if you need some wire, you can get some here at eTrailer.com. We're going to strip it back. And then we're going to crimp a butt connector on one end and the other end we're just going to attach to the black wire coming off of our actuator. Now that we've got those crimped together I'm just going to route this wire over to our circuit breaker and we're just going to follow the rest of the wires that are already existing there until we get over to here. We'll then want to strip back the other end of our wire and if you need to cut it to length go ahead. I've already got this one trimmed to the length that I wanted it to. So we're just gonna strip that back and now we're going to be putting on a ring terminal so we can connect to our circuit breaker. We've got ring terminals here at eTrailer.com and this is just going to crimp right onto here. And then we can attach this to our circuit breaker. There are two different posts here. One's labeled auxiliary and the other one's labeled battery. We want to hook to the auxiliary post, which is going to be the silver stud. So we're just going to remove the nut. We'll slide our wire on there and then we're just going to reinstall that nut. You can tighten it down with a 3 8 socket. Now before we hook the circuit breaker up to the battery, we're just going to keep power off of our units. We can finish hooking up our wires and finish getting everything installed because we don't want it accidentally activating when we don't want it to and things like that. So we're just going to leave that till the end. And in our trailer here, it had a jacketed wire like this. We found it in the harness that was located right here. And inside of there, you're going to have a blue and a white wire. The blue wire here is the brake controller wire that comes from your seven way and the white wire is ground because you need power and ground to activate your electric brakes. So what we were able to do then is rather than having to route an additional wire up for our breakaway switch, we no longer need this ground wire because we don't have electric brakes anymore. So we can hook our yellow wire to the white wire and then we're gonna head over to our junction box and I'll show you how we can get that ground switched over to our breakaway switch. So here you can see we're in our junction box here up by our fifth wheel head and this is that jacketed wire. The blue, you can see was hooked to the blue wire from the seven way, which that's all good. The ground wire was hooked to this big bundle of white wires. This is all ground. So I just cut it off. You can see I cut it right there. 
And this is the white wire now going inside. I just crimped it to the black wire coming off of our breakaway switch. The other part of your breakaway switch should be hooked to power and that's here so you can just look around for that. The blue wire, when I traced it inside, this goes to the battery. So this is the hot side for our breakaway switch. We hooked the white wire to the cold side of the breakaway switch. The white wire is the only thing that we have left from the actuator that we need to hook up. And we just attached this to ground. So I took a ring terminal. This is larger than the ones we use in the circuit breakers. We have these here at eTrailer.com as well. And right here, this black wire is goes directly to the battery negative. So we were able to attach it right here to the stud, so it's going right to our battery. Now before we finish hooking up that power, now we want to run our brake lines. I do highly recommend using a brake line tool when making any really aggressive bends. I used one here, and it gives you a nice clean bend without kinking the line. Because if the line kinks, it's pretty much useless at that point. And it just attaches here to the back, and this is going to route to the brakes at the back. We have line kits av available here at eTrailer.com that's going to come with the necessary lengths of lines as well as all the fittings and hoses you're going to need to get it hooked up to those brakes. We also have disc brake kits available here at eTrailer.com. If you don't have those installed, you want to make sure you get those installed at this point so you can get all of your lines hooked up. The kit we're using comes with flexible hoses that allows us to hook to these brakes nice and easy without contacting anything here. Now that we've got our lines all run and everything else is connected, we can hook our actuator up to the battery by completing the circuit breaker circuit. Our battery is in this compartment and the red cable you see here comes right from the battery positive. So we can hook right to this nut right here and connect it to our circuit breaker. We're gonna connect it to the circuit breaker side first since that side's not hot. We can now go ahead and remove the nut down here. We're using an 11 millimeter socket to do so. You do want to be careful when taking this nut off as this wire is hot so if you hit your wrench or on ground or anything it is going to cause some sparks so just be careful about that we also want to be careful that we don't drop this cable down because it's also hot and we don't want it to ground out on anything so we're just going to slide that nut off we're going to take our jumper wire that we made put it in place and then just reinstall the nut now we need to bleed our brakes. We need to get all the air out of the system, so we just have brake fluid in it. We're going to start at the caliper that is the furthest away from where our actuator is. So we put the actuator at the front on the driver's side. We're here at the rear on the passenger side. And you want to use the top bleeder screw. Some of your kits that you get do have bottom bleeder screws. That's just because you can change the orientation depending upon the application for this caliper. Always use the top. To help minimize mess, we're just going to use a hose to direct the fluid down into a container. And then we'll need an assistant to either pull the breakaway switch pin or activate the brake controller to start pumping it. You want to make sure you've got the actuator filled with fluid and you can use DOT3 or DOT4 brake, brake fluid. We're using DOT3. Our chain. And we want to do this until we get a nice solid stream, just like we have there. There's no air bubbles in it, so we're going to close it off. You can turn it off. And we're gonna just repeat this process at each wheel until we get a nice solid stream out of each one so we don't have any air in the system. After each time that you bleed some of the fluid through the system, you wanna have your assistant just double check the reservoir to make sure that it's full because if you run it empty while bleeding, you have to start the process all over again. Now that we've got all the fluid bled out, we wanna make sure that we don't have any leaks. To do this, we're just gonna pull the breakaway switch pin. It's gonna deadhead our pump, put it at the maximum pressure, and we're gonna check each of the unions and fittings to make sure that there's nothing leaking there. We'll start with our first connection here, nice and dry. So we're just gonna move back and then check each individual one. Especially make sure to check the unions. That's usually the spot you're gonna find leaks the most. But we're all dry, so we're all good to go. We can now reinstall our tires and start enjoying our new brake system. And that completes our installation of Hydrostar's 1600 PSI hydraulic brake actuator on our 2017 Keystone Montana.